Good morning, everybody. So, I am outside on my deck right now. I'm about to do some writing on my latest project. Um, but I wanted to chat to you first before I got started with it. I'm working on 1837, my Camp NaNoWriMo project, which I've been continuing doing my 1400 words-ish a day on it throughout May. And I'm, you know, about 20,000 words, 18,000 words, I guess, away from the end, which is exciting. But at the same time, I'm just at that point in the draft where the problems that are there are so glaring to me and so sort of upsetting because you've put all this work into it and you're reading and you're thinking about it as you go and I don't know I, I'm really hoping it's one of those things where like I'm my own worst critic but it's just getting to be very um disheartening to remember all the problems and still how much work there is to do in it and to think I'm not entirely sure how to even solve these problems so for example, um, like I've had these characters in my head for two and a half years. This story started when I was hiking in Wales in 2017. And originally it was like a Snow White Evil Queen origin story. Now it's set in the Upper Canada Rebellion in 1837. It took about a year to change the setting. <laughs> and then um, another year for me to actually sit down and start writing it. And then I started writing it about two months ago. And so I know my characters very well. I've had these three characters in my head the whole time. I think one of them is actually coming off quite well. One of them is coming off well as well. But one of them, the guy, oh, I have him in my head and I know how cool he is. But when I see him on the page, I'm like, what is wrong? Like, you're so cool and vibrant. But on the page, he's literally like nothing. He's not turning into a cool character. Like, he's nothing like what I imagined him to be when I put him on the page. And I know I'm going to go back and edit it and try to fix it, but it's like, darn it. I feel like he's not right, and he hasn't been right this whole manuscript. And I've been trying to get him right, but just it's not there yet. And I'm having a... I don't know. I Everybody has to love him. He's I love him so much, but he's not... The way he, he's not lovable the way he is the way I'm writing him right now and it's so frustrating and there are other problems like the fact that I think um, the beginning is too slow and the ending is too fast and then there's the overwhelming problem which is the most disheartening I talk a lot about liking how I love solid character action like I think that character action needs to drive the plot and I have criticized other books for having a lot of coincidental things rather than having things happen by character action. The thing is you can say that, but it's actually really hard to do. And I'm not sure if my characters are driving the action enough. And I'm not sure if I can have them drive the action more than I am. Because I'm writing a historical fiction book about a rebellion so all of the events that led up to it, I'm manipulating timelines and things a, a tiny bit, but I really want it to be as historically accurate as I can make it, which means that the events are already predestined and they can't be controlled by my characters. I'm getting to the part where they're actually going to make a difference in it. That's the climax. They're actually going to do something that's going to change things, which is cool. But the rest of the book, they've just been sort of helping. They've been making decisions like w with their role, like they've been doing some spying and some weapon smuggling and stuff. So they've been making active decisions there. They've been making active decisions in their personal lives. They each, the two girls each have a very solid reason for why they're helping and they've been one of them's been taking a lot of action. The other one, the whole point of her is that she's just kind of choosing not to act and choosing not to be bold because that's who she is and she's going to change. Um, so they've been taking action in those respects, but the overall events, like the rebellion really being kicked off by the king dying and the conservative family compact throwing... Um, a ball to block the reformers from having a meeting and all the events that are actually happening in lower Canada that are affecting the events in upper Canada. Like, my girls have 
no control over any of that, right? That big, a big turning point of the book is the king dying, and it's, it's not through character action. It comes off as like, it's like a coincidence, almost, I feel when you're reading it, and it but it's what really happened, you know? So I have these signposts in history that I have to meet, and sometimes there's nothing my characters can do about them. I mean, the king is in England. They can't go kill him. Like, they're just, they're at a market, and they find out the king's dead. I don't like that it's turning on these coincidental historical roadmaps, but that's how the events turned. I don't know. It's one of those things that I think I'm gonna probably need beta readers or probably alpha readers because good lord it, that we're not at a beta stage but just to tell me what they think in terms of the coincidence it the coincidences or the stuff that's not being driven by the characters I think I can probably get them a little bit more involved and drive things more or drive things at least in their part of the plan more. It happened 200 years ago and it happened how it happened, you know? There is, there's not much they can change and that kind of drives to the root of why I'm writing this story in the first place. I didn't want to write about the Upper Canada Rebellion through the perspective of the men who planned it. A, because that's a little bit of a stretch for me being a 23 year old girl in the 2020 writing about a 50 year old man in 1837 it it it, it doesn't interest me <laughs> to write about that and uh it would probably not ring true i wanted to explore what women could have been doing behind the scenes now, I don't even know if some of the things that I am that I have them doing are realistic, like if they would have been allowed out of the house as much as I'm letting them out of the house. They are gonna start dressing like men very soon. First of all, I need to find like a historian consultant. Uh, so if you know anybody who's an expert on 1830s Canada, and I can't really pay you, I, I maybe for an hour of your time <laughs> just to ask questions or I have to get to the Toronto Historical Archives to talk to the librarians there which is more feasible financially um currently not open so that sucks this whole quarantine the only thing that I wanted to do is go to that freaking library <laughs> and also like there's while I'm home I'm usually in Baltimore but while I'm home like there's a whole bunch of historical sites related to the rebellion like there's a historical walking tour of Toronto there is Mackenzie House which I've actually been to and was incredibly helpful the staff there is amazing they took me on like a private tour where they I asked all sorts of questions and I got to see Mackenzie's house and I asked about the rebellion and the causes and the furniture that I was seeing and they were so amazingly helpful but that was like right at the beginning before I was even outlining and so I would want to go back and there are places in Niagara that I want to visit like there's so much research and things that I want to continue doing for this book to fix it up before I start editing and I'm here in Toronto for once where I can actually do it and I can't go anywhere and I know it's to keep us all safe and I'm totally good with that but man do I wish <laughs> that I could like go to the library right now I just want to finish the story and then put it away for a while so I can come back to it with fresh, more objective eyes. Because I think at this point I'm really just seeing the, the bad in it um, and not the good and I know there is good. I wrote a hell of fire scene the other day and I was so happy about it. It was so good. So that was great. I know that I have one really good scene in this book. I have more than one. There are some really fun scenes in this book. There are some scenes that are really emotional for me that I really get into um, there's some relationships that I like but there's a lot that needs to be improved and the truth is this story is very hard to write it's historical fiction from a time that people don't know very much about it's historical fiction not with the people who are actually involved in it I'm trying to put people in it to, partially to get more perspectives partially because I wanted to explore that idea of women in being involved it's from two different perspectives the two sisters it's just a really hard project for me to write I feel um, my next one I think is much more in my wheelhouse so I'm excited to start working on that one I just have to get into a mindset where I'm happy with what I have and I'm happy to keep pushing forward 
and I feel like there's still like hope and possibility for this story to be good. <laughs> so I would love to hear like when you get to this point in the draft where you're just like, this is all awful. Like what do you do to remind yourself that it's not all awful? What do you do to motivate yourself to keep writing? I would really appreciate um, your advice and wisdom on that. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.